So the Glock MOSs have modernized and revolutionized how people are mounting red dots to their Glock pistols, but there are still hundreds of thousands of Glocks out there that were made before the MOS was a reality that have no optic cut whatsoever. And you probably, if you're watching this, you probably own a Glock somewhere, a Glock 26, a 17, a Gen 3, a Gen 4, 19 maybe, that does not have an MOS optic plate. So there's a couple options. If you want to level up and add a red dot, you either need to sell that gun and get an MOS or another pistol that has an optic cut already, or you send the slide off to get milled by your favorite milling company. Now I've been using a company, Jaeger Works now, for I wanna say around seven years. They've done all my pistols, they've done my carry guns, they've done a bunch of the other guns that we have here in the armory. And recently I sent off a couple of our Gen 3 Glock 17 slides that don't have cuts obviously, because they're Gen 3, uh, and I wanted them modernized but all I wanted was an optic cut. I did not want front serrations. I didn't want, you know, all sorts of windows and ports and like crazy fancy stuff. I just wanted an optic cut. I wanted to keep the slide as stock and as simple as possible. And it also means that it is much cheaper than some of the full optic packages. So what this slide has is a RMR cut here in the front, the way that Jaegerworks does it. It's got the, I wanna say this is the black nitride. It's like $60. And the entire thing all said and done is 185. So if you think about taking a police trade-in Glock 17, which I've bought a few of those for $380, and you don't have optic cuts, send this off, get it milled for an optic, it's going to be a little bit cheaper than a lot of the Glock MOSs out there. And arguably, this is actually better than a Glock MOS because those MOS plates can fail. I've had screws underneath come loose and just I've had all sorts of issues. Uh, but actually milling the optic directly to the slide, I've had much better success than using the MOS. So what you get from Jaegerworks, if you do happen to go this route, uh, and there's other companies doing something very similar, you are going to get the actual screws that are sized appropriately for RMRs, SROs, and other RMR pattern uh, optics from Trigicon. You're gonna get two little witnessing bosses here in the front. Uh, this helps prevent the RMR or the SRO or similar optic from uh, moving forwards and backward um, in the mount. This just allows for a better fitment and potentially the optic can re-zero I don't necessarily rely on that if you have an RMR and you're having to take it off to swap out the battery, uh, but it does allow a superior fitment of the optic uh, without needing to, like the old days, you'd have to, you had to send your optic to the company and they would actually fit it to the slide. People don't really do that anymore and I think that's great uh, because of the little bosses and what's going on. This is a very tight fit right here. So let's go ahead and show you guys kind of uh, what mounting one of these suckers on here looks like. So the first thing we're going to do is Loctite the screws. I highly recommend this. I use blue Loctite. I, I don't think you should use red Loctite, although you could, or green or purple or some of the other ones, other ones out there. Uh, I recommend blue. And so what I'm going to do here, there's a lot of uh, various methods of thought and philosophies for how to use Loctite. Um, I just plaster it on there. I just dump it on. Some people leave it overnight. Some people say if you use too much, it doesn't do its job. Frankly, I have no idea if they're right or wrong. Um, I, I don't know if it actually matters that much. Uh, once the Loctite's on there, once it's you know adhered and once it's caked on, whether it's in the, uh, in the little drill and tap or not, I really don't think it makes a difference. I'm then going to take my optic. In this case, I will, if I were smart, I would change the battery on this. Uh, actually, no, I'm gonna use the SRO. Um, this is a five MOA SRO. I don't like five MOAs, but I actually kind of want to play around with it a little bit. Uh, so we're gonna do that. Drop the screw in, both. And now I've just forgotten a key component, a way to fasten the actual screws themselves. Now that I have my giant box of hex keys that is uh, not organized at all, I will find the appropriate size within one try. Oh, <laughs> right there, perfect. That's what happens when you, you know, live life this way. And now I'm just gonna tighten these down. It's a very simple process. And as far as what torque to do, I, I'm not using a, a particular amount of torque. I usually tighten it down until I'm hitting resistance. And then I do a quarter turn or until it kind of stops moving. One thing I do like to do, um, especially if I'm running something like the SRO, um, I don't have to remove the optic every time I change battery, which is very convenient. Um, but I really wanna make sure, cause I'm not having to undo the screws every time. I really wanna know if the screws actually start to move and start to become you know, loosened over time. 
So I'm going to use a silver Sharpie or a paint marker of some sort, and I'm going to witness mark. You don't have to do this. It's just if you want a little bit of extra information as to what's going on. And since I'm not removing this all the time, it's not like I have to update these every six months because this optic is more or less permanent on this slide. So now I've got those witness marked. I'll see if they move like dramatically. And the SRO is mounted and it's good to go. The other thing that makes this a cost effective option, um, if you do have an older Glock and you just want to update it, is uh, I go ahead and have the sights removed and I don't add them back. I don't go out there and buy suppressor height sights, which will be another like 100 bucks. Um, I've never really needed backup irons. Um, if my battery does die or I know it's starting to die, I just swap out the battery. If my glass happens to shatter, like on this SRO, I'm not going to be able to see the sights anyway. If I get a bunch of mud and debris on here so that I can't see the red dot, well, guess what? I can't see the iron sights either. Um, I'm actually starting to move away from running backup irons. I just don't think they're as necessary as people think. They sound really good on paper, but when you're actually you start to think through various scenarios in which you would use backup irons. There's actually very few where you would be seeing them through your optic, whether it's rainy, whether there's blood, mud, guts, your glass is shattered, you're actually not gonna ever see your iron sights in any of those scenarios. So I'm skipping those, saving some money, and I'm just focusing on a high quality optic that is going to run, well, I'm not gonna say 100% of the time, but the majority of the time, and I'm gonna use my pistol that way. So I've got my new one right here. Uh, the other reason this is really good, um, another good option, you know, this is a, is a good option, is if you are unsure, you want to trust your life to an aftermarket product like the Zev Duty Slide. I've been using this for quite a while on my main gun, this one right here. Um, using a stock Glock slide and having it milled is going to give you the maximum amount of reliability. We are not going to have to worry about tolerancing quite as much as something like the Zev slide or slide made by another company. So there is a little bit of comfort there in using an actual Glock slide. And uh, that's actually one reason I got this guy, is I wanted something as stock as possible uh, for training and for demos. And this is on a Gen 3 frame, so this is kind of as stock as it gets. Um, obviously outside of running a red dot, but I actually think running red dots is becoming stock nowadays, and so this is more or less a stock pistol. So that's just one option for mounting a red dot to a pistol. I really like the work that Jaegerworks does. It's cost effective. There is a lead time, just like any slide milling company out there. I've had great success with all the cuts that they've done for our company and done for me personally. Uh, so this is going to be um, really, again, my main gun moving forward. I'll swap back and forth with the Zev slide potentially. Um, I just like demoing and training with a stock gun. Um, it just sends a good message. I don't need a bunch of fancy cuts and ports and weird things to be able to shoot well. I can still shoot a gun like this just fine. Uh, with a little bit of skate tape or not, with an SRO and the stock slide without backup iron sights. So, hope that's helpful guys if you're looking at updating your old Glocks and bringing them into the future.